what I call it Blue Now around 2010-ish You get a call to work with Sir Elton John We're talking about over 300 million records sold how was that traveling all over the world with him? I will say this. I love everybody that I have sang with. Thank you for calling me. Thank you that it was not just I'm talking about me right now, okay? I include everybody, but I'm talking about me right now. I thank everybody for calling me and let me participate and I'm just so I'm just elated over these numbers of of copies that have been sold and my voice is on there. But Sir Elton John, I can't find words to express how I feel about him. He He's past wonderful. Past, and what I'm talking about as a person, we already know the music is, yes, but I'm talking about him as a person. He treated me and the other girls like, like queens. We lived so good on the road with him. It was almost like not being on the road. It was like not being there. Everything was so well organized. Our schedules were not just in our hands. It was in somebody else's hands. But we just had to do our part as far as keeping those schedules. And that's all we had to do. We didn't have to cook. We wasn't cleaning up. We were not. <laughs> he had somebody to come and wash our clothes. A laundry lady would come and get our dirty clothes and and she would take them and she would only have them for till we got to the next state and she'd meet us there and bring us our clean clothes. Um, we stayed in the best hotels. I mean, fabulous. I got the opportunity. Uh, we all had that opportunity. But I had the opportunity to stand with her when I say her, I'm talking about the queen. The queen. Okay, Queen Elizabeth. Okay, I, I had the opportunity of speaking with Prince Charles. Wow. And everybody else at the palace. I ate. I ate with them. <laughs> when we did the Queen Jubilee. And I mean, everybody was at the Queen Jubilee. Everybody who have ever been on a camera that was great, did great things, I mean, made the mark, was there. I got a chance to talk with them and um, eat with them and sit and laugh. and It was, I, I'll never forget it. Because I don't know if I'll ever get that opportunity again to go to the palace. That was beautiful. Now, he highlighted you nightly on, I guess that's why they call it the blues. How did that come about? And even the New York Times raved about that part of you all going back and forth. That gospel, you know, send off and yes. send back. How, how did that come about?
guess you guys know that the the way that came about with um, Elton John with us going back and forth, the ad libbing and stuff, and oh my God, just give me chills thinking about it. That came about with me longing to be at church. I was like, oh, I've been out here a long time. I just want to go to church just once. But, you know, sometimes we would find a church. Me and the girls would find a church. And and uh, we would go on Sundays. We had a pastor in London. We 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 uh, went to Joel, Pastor Joel Osteen's church. When we were in Texas. We went to a bishop's church in in London. In London also, we found us a church every place we went. We we went to Pastor Pastor House, his church in Las Vegas, Mountain Mountain Top in Las Vegas. He was our pastor. Um we we even had a a, a pastor that would come and speak with us uh when we would be off for a minute, you know. So they made sure that we still um, got what we needed spiritually. I can, uh, did the Bible, Bible studies with the girls. You know, we had Bible study on, on the second day that we was off. Um, but that back and forth, I'm, I'm going too far. That back and forth, I was worshiping the Lord at the time. What I learned to do on stage while the, the, the concert is going on, while I'm, you know, doing that, I sometimes I would just say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. While, while he, I'm not saying it loud. Nobody hear me. It's up on it. You know, while he'd be singing and, and the band would uh, sing some of the songs that we weren't included on. So I would just, I was up there just, oh, hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And then all of a sudden, he was he said, That's why they call it. I said, Oh yeah, but I was at church. They didn't know it. <laughs> I just said it just came out. And I was like, I got so scared. I said, Oh, Gene, this is the last time you sing it with him. He is going to fire you. You're not doing this no more. Pack your stuff. I was just telling myself, pack it. You should have done that. I, ooh, I beat myself bad. But after that show, Davey, um, the guitar play, player, Davey said, gee. I was like, I was just thinking, well, go ahead and say it. Go on. He said, Elton loved it. I said, what? He said, he loved it. How did you think of that? I said, I was at church for a minute. And so the next night, every time he got there, he go, bam, the camera would hit me. And I, and I would be scared. I was like, Lord, you know what? I, I was at church. I don't even know what to say. So I started making up stuff, just making things up. And excuse me, and then Davy said, um, on the end, Gene, just get that squall. I said, You kidding me? He said, No. I said, like church? He said, Yes, that's what he wants. So I just ah! and, and held it. Because I could still hear the music. Mm -hmm. ah! All the way. I said, okay. He said, oh my God, that was wonderful. And I was saying to myself, I did not plan that. <laughs> it was, you know what I mean? What am I look like singing over the artist? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's like, we don't do that. You respect the artist. You know, the single star ad living in the microphone. Well, yeah. And after that, it just went crazy. I started looking at the people. I said, they're crazy too. Because I can't keep doing this because, it, you know, I was just like, I'm not supposed to do this. But that's where I was. That, that's how that happened. And you recorded three albums with him in 2010, The Union, 2013, The Diving Board. But you also did a live album from the Beacon Theater with him. 
How yeah. how was that experience? Exciting. Recording. Exciting because you don't know really that you're recording. I mean, you know you're recording, but you're not thinking like you're recording. You're thinking like, I'm just singing, I'm singing, do my best. You always wanted to just do your best. Do your best. I can't mess up. I would hear the notes before I sang them. Because that's what you're supposed to do anyway. I would hear those notes and you just sing. You know, just sing. It I was wonder, very exciting. I wonder, do you realize you actually recorded with him in 1993 for a song called The Power? Do you remember that? Or was well, he not I, at I the I don't session? remember, like, being... Uh, I don't remember, like, detail details because I recorded all the times. And you go in there... When you go in to record, you don't know the song. You had never heard it before. You don't know what you're going to be singing. You don't know your part, nothing. But when, when you go in, um, they teach you the part, and they don't teach you, teach you, teach you. Like, okay, do it again. You got it? Do it No, uh-uh. They would just, um, you would have to go in there and listen, and they would record us in, like, like segments of recording. Um, you didn't have to hear the whole song and then remember where your part is. Okay, you come in right here. Thank God they didn't. What they would do is um, they would record us in these segments and they would just roll the tape where you were, where you need to come in at a couple of bars before you come in. And you just sing what they just told, what you just heard, just on that part. And so you may hear the whole song after, after it's over. You've already done recording. And so you leave and when you get in the car... You don't know what you did. 